use water constantly without really being aware of it. Water is life, as they say, and it's not just a cliché. It's really crucial to everything that we do, from taking a shower to drinking water to cooking food. In higher income countries, we take for granted clean water, safe sanitation, the things that we've had for generations. Could you imagine carrying the water that you require for a day in your arms? For some people, a shower or a bath could be multiple trips to a remote water location, and we wouldn't even be sure of the quality of the water that we're bathing in, or that we're drinking, or that we're washing in. And the fact that we take for granted that it's safe, when for many people it isn't, is a real challenge. Arup has teamed up with Frank Water. We're working on a toolkit that we hope will help NGOs that are working in the water and sanitation industry. So we're working to develop a toolkit that integrates the resource management, so the, the background to um, water availability, how much water there is in the environment, and to be able to look at that supply. It's understanding the differences between sources. Often the deeper wells have much better water quality. It's much more difficult for contaminants to make their way into the ground. The risk of faecal contamination is significant. So data on faecal coliform is one of the key things that um, communities should uh, be able to test for. The public health benefits of us improving the quality of our water supply or um, indeed uh, ensure we have safe sanitation is something that two or three generations ago was really appreciated. Diseases like typhoid and cholera are things of the past for us, but very much of the now for many people around the world. Water as a source is generally reliant on rainfall, and floods are really just large amounts of rainfall uh, within a particularly short space of time. We're looking at how we can use satellite imagery to identify land use and how that might contribute to runoff, which would be part of how we assess a flood. Different types of land use have different hydrological parameters associated with them, such as the level of runoff you can get. So by changing a land use, that means that you might be able to reduce the flood risk for a specific area. We use high resolution satellite imagery. It's 0.5 meter resolution. And by labeling each individual pixel in the image according to its land use, that allows us to get a really high resolution map that can be used in the natural flood management design process. So in this pilot project, we used urban areas, woodlands, fields, and also field boundaries, but it can easily be extended to have more fine grained types of land use. By looking at historic satellite images, we can look at how the land use might have changed over time and we can start looking at how that might have changed the flood risk in that area. As our climate's changing and we're getting more extremes, maybe watercourses that had much lower flows gave us this sense of confidence that we could develop and encroach. And as that climate starts to get more extreme, we get caught out. Research helps to inform our understanding across key themes that are currently affecting or we think will affect the world. It provides business insights so we can understand practically what we can do about these things. Our actions then contribute to a resilient and ultimately much more sustainable world. You're really solving problems that people face on a day-to-day -day basis. So there's a lot of personal reward from doing that. And I think as well, in the broader picture, contributing to the UN Sustainable Development Goals is a, a really worthy thing. And I think it's a really good thing for Arab to do as well. Mm -hmm.